Hey, welcome to the Cam and Otis Show. Uh, as we continue our, our focus for March, prepare. Oh, and, and I, I said the buzzword, Camden, the focus for March, which is the focus for the year, which is focus. So there we go, me and my circular definitions once again. So our focus for the year and our focus for March, or our theme for March, there we go, is prepare. And uh, as we jump into that, you know, last week's show with Camden and I, define, prepare, and what that's like, why it's important, and how you can do it. Uh, we wanted to have a couple of guests on it, and one, learn about them, and then two, how do they prepare for, you know, business operations or whatever they do. So, Nate, aka Just Nate, uh, great to have you, and Dennis, great to have y'all on the show. Thanks for having us, guys. This is awesome. So, I just, uh, just want to kick off with a little bit of a a background on uh, on on both of you and Nate. I'll have you go first. You know, how'd you get? You know, the, the the synopsis of how you got here. What what prepared you for this moment? Uh, well, you called me up and said, "Hey, we'll get on the show." No, uh, <laughs> so um, Dennis and I we run a nonprofit called the Smalls or the Colorado Small Government Contractor Collaborative, aka the Smalls. And uh, along with that, we also work together for the same company. So uh, just by default, working together one, with one another, um, we found that we uh, kind of prepare ourselves together, actually. We, we, uh, we both have the very high, same high energy uh, going after work together. Uh, Dennis, he can talk to you about what he does specifically. Um, him and I met when we were both uh, business development directors for separate companies. Actually met over coffee one day. And uh, started talking and, and realized that we had a lot in common. So we figured maybe we should uh, start doing more and more together. And we ended up developing a nonprofit together, um, developing our own podcast together. And uh, the story goes on and on. So um, go ahead, Dennis. Yeah, yeah, Dennis, please. <laughs> I'm still working on that same cup of coffee, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, so Nate's correct. Um, actually, the impetus for the Colorado Small Government Contractor Collaborative, the Small, started uh, three years ago, um, in October 2017. Heck, it's working on four years now. Um, where we, I met with another uh, BD director from another company and um, she said, boy, wouldn't it be cool if we could get kind of these small government contractors together? And I said, yeah, it would, wouldn't it? And she said, yeah. And I said, well, let's do that. And she said, do what? I said, let's get these small government contractors together. So we started out, it was like a couple of us and it was five, then it was 10, then it was 20, then it was 30. And then somebody came down from um, Denver and sat in one of our meetings and was like, Hey, could we do this up in Denver? We're like, sure. We can do it in Denver. So we started meeting up there and then Nate joined and said, Hey, could we do something in Pueblo? We're like, sure. Let's do something in Pueblo. And the next thing we know, we were meeting in all three cities, uh, major government contracting meccas for Colorado, if you will, uh, really Aurora, Colorado Springs and Pueblo. Mm -hmm. And then we started pulling in guys from the Boulder area, which, Many of your listeners may not be aware there's a large government contractor presence in the Boulder space as well. Actually, Gun Barrel, which is just kind of the north uh, east of Boulder. And um, so this kind of kept going. So the next thing I know, we got a website going and uh, Nate helped me a lot with that. I wasn't too technically savvy on that aspect of things. And we got into social media and then he's we were talking last year about, hey, you know, it would be cool if we do the podcast. And we're like, yeah, let's let's do a podcast, too. And. So there's a long story to that, but hold on, don't let him fool you. He he actually poo pooed the idea first. Yeah, uh, <laughs> he's like nobody listens to podcasts anymore. I'm like, well, apparently you don't commute like I do every single day because yeah. everybody's listening to podcasts. So yeah, so we got the podcast going just as COVID was hitting, so it was very fortuitous. Um, and we've been doing a podcast a week as well now. Um, and so the the purpose of the smalls was you know, initially get small government contractors together, but we quickly realized that that's not um, really the, it's still the focus, but it, it expanded beyond that. It was like, well, to have smalls, or if you have a small government contractor, you need primes, you need large companies too, because mm -hmm. either we support them or to bid on contracts, they support us uh, often. And so we needed the primes in there. So the large companies, the balls, Lockheed Martin, uh, Teledyne Brown, um, all the others. I know I apologize if you're from a large company and you're not getting recognized. Uh, Jacobs, 
Um, yeah, please, so please then, allow us to sub for you still in the future, right? <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. So then, um, and then we also started looking at service providers, right? Because if you're a small government contractor, you need service providers, you, especially if you're starting out, you need IT, you need accountants, you need lawyers, you need um, just all those kind of functional pieces um, to it. And then, you know, if you're developing a product, you need manufacturers. So we kind of added that early last year, uh, starting to engage with Manufacturer's Edge and the manufacturing space. Pueblo mm -hmm. actually has a lot of manufacturers mm -hmm. down in that space. And we do a lot of aerospace manufacturing up in uh, the Denver area as well <clears throat> that you may not be aware of. So this ecosystem has kind of continued to bloom, if you will. Um, and that's led to a whole bunch of other things. And so it's been really exciting. We're tied into the Colorado Space Business Roundtable, the Colorado Aerospace Network, um, Colorado Labs is somebody else we've been engaging with this last year. Um, that's all, you guys may not know this in listener land, but Colorado is the second largest concentration of government organizations outside of Washington, DC. So if there's a government organization, there's some element of it here in Colorado. Um, and so, uh, again, we've kind of branched out to these other areas, and it's not just Department of Defense. We we kind of focus on government, um, uh, the whole of government kind of um, aspect, not just DOD. Although back to our core foundation, the Department of Defense government contractors, the small government contractors have been our focus. Um, so that's well kind of well what done. we do and where we are and how we got here. Um, it's been an exciting ride. Every day is something new. Um, as Nate didn't mention, but we got a call the other day from the Pentagon asking if they could be on one of our shows and we're like, sure. Um, and so it just kind of keeps going. And, and so Nate, how many countries and states have listened to us now? You mean you're going to let somebody else talk for a second? Yeah. Like I get, we've never done one of these before, Dennis. I went, What's to, going on? <laughs> I went to breakfast. I went to breakfast this morning with a good buddy I hadn't seen in a year. I'm caffeinated. I so I'm caffeinated. I apologize, Otis and Camden. <laughs> this is not our first podcast we've ever done. So uh, <laughs> we know to give people, other people a chance to talk. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, to answer your question, Dennis, and I'll keep it short for Otis and Camden there. Um, Back to my coffee. <laughs> yeah. We, uh, on our podcast, we uh, have done just, uh, actually, March 16th will be one year. And uh, as of March 16th, we'll have done 51 episodes. We missed one episode last year, just because I think Dennis and I were both on vacation that, that week and just mm -hmm. didn't get yep. a chance to do one remote. Um so, but other than that, right now, uh, throughout those 50 or 49 podcasts we've done so far now, we have uh, our listenership is across 40 different states and 14 different countries on a weekly basis are listening to us. So, wow. yeah. So, one of the, you're going to ask us about lessons learned. We've been, we're also involved with the chamber. We had a meeting with them, uh, the um, Small Business Advisory Committee, mm -hmm. brought in a bunch of small government contractors and like, what's the one thing kind of you're getting out of COVID? that's good or bad. And then kind of what would you like to see And everybody said, you know, use of social media um, webinars is kind of like the thing that everybody's had to turn to, mm -hmm. but what everybody's finding is, and you guys have recognized this too, is you, you think locally, but act globally because everything we're doing now is heard around the planet or at least nationally, regionally. It's not things we're doing. These meetings that we're having aren't just, um, staying local anymore they're mm -hmm. being broadcast and people can pop in from anywhere so that's the, excuse me that's been kind of interesting you know uh one thing that stood out to me uh as i was preparing for the show uh and looking at y'all's <laughs> website and then uh dennis i, I gotta applaud you because you, you dropped it in there when you were talking as well uh was the term ecosystem and so when i was thinking about preparation uh when i think about the word ecosystem you know that's that complex web of relationships you know and especially what y'all are talking about that ecosystem so many different incentives at play so many different types of people doing all sorts of different things and I think that that's such a complicated problem when you're trying to solve those type of situations and solve them in a way where all of those incentives are aligning. And I think that is the exactly the type of problem that you have to prepare for. So I found it really interesting as you were talking through that you started off in one section of this and then kind of recognized the ecosystem around you and then branched out into there. So how has that been? Uh, how has it been really being kind of unprepared for those other opportunities? And how has it been preparing along the way as you've been growing? I think it's an evolution, um, an evolution in thought, really, you know, as mm -hmm. you're, 
as you're moving in one way, you, you kind of recognize, oh, we should be talking to these guys too. Um, so my day job, I'm a business development manager for uh, quantum research here in Colorado Springs. And it's the same kind of thing, right? So you're working on a proposal and you're, you're looking at something that you want to go after and you're like, oh, well, I need these people. And then those people say, oh, we should bring these people on or, or whatever. Mm-hmm. It's, it's kind of, we did put some thought into it um, initially. And, you know, Nate, Nate, I'll let Nate talk a little more, but we talk, talk about the ecosystem and, and a lot of the stuff, we collaborate a lot with a lot of people. And I think that's the beauty of it. Oh, and that's the other thing I wanted to say about the meeting we had with the small business advisory committee. The second piece everybody really wanted was to get back together with people. Mm -hmm. Uh, This is fine, this webinar thing, but they're like, we lost all the creative juice. It's Mm -hmm. it's getting a bunch of people in the room, getting on a whiteboard, talking about things. That's kind of where these ideas all come from. Um, You know, the networking activities, they all want to get back to hey, let's have some networking activities where we can be face-to-face and talk to each other because that's kind of where the the energy kind of flows from. Nate, I'll defer to you. Well, okay. So I'm going to ask, you you asked the question, how do we prepare? Mm -hmm. Um, The best way I can say that we prepare, um, and and this was before we even started the Smalls, I think it's just Dennis and I's personality, is we we are the type of people that never turn down a conversation. Mm -hmm. Somebody calls us up, and says, hey, uh, I got this product. I'd like to talk to somebody about it. Are you willing to talk? Or, hey, I've got this job opening. I heard, I see on LinkedIn, you just took a new job a year ago. Would you be willing to talk to me about it? Why not, right? I mean, what, what, what's the worst that could happen is that I can lose an hour of my day, but I never look at anything in life as mm-hmm. losing time. I always look at it as, as every experience I've experienced happens for a reason. Mm-hmm. Um, so... That's the way I prepare is I never turn down a conversation, never turn down a, uh, you know, a a quick story on one of our podcasting companies. Um, I had a company that I had been introduced. I don't know how I got introduced anymore, but. Which company um, are you talking about? Model. I knew you were talking about Model. (laughs) They're our favorite right now. (laughs) They are. uh, A a small. Modeloutdoors.com. Check them out. (laughs) (laughs) This company contacts me or I contact them. I don't remember how it happened, but. Um, I told Dennis, Hey, we, I got this podcast book for next week. And he's like, who is it? And I said, it's model outdoors. He's like, what do they do? And they said, they make water bottles and their tagline is the water's first multi-tool. And, uh, Dennis is like, what does water bottles have to do with government contracting, the ecosystem, anything like that? And I said, well, <laughs> they're trying to sell their product to the United States military. He's like, perfect. Let's go. Right. So we had that conversation, but mm-hmm. because of that conversation, it expanded into new realms. I run um, t- a couple different Cub Scout dens, Boy Scout troops, um, and the motto of, of Boy Scouts is "Always be prepared." Right? So Elias, once again, throw it in there. That's right. Always <laughs> be prepared. Um, but that's that's kind of the mentality of is the way I'm prepared is the knowledge. It's mm-hmm. not necessarily I have to have a tool to be prepared. I don't right. have to have you know my tablet to be prepared all the time. It's I have to have the knowledge, and that knowledge is gained by always having the conversation and never turning that down. I want to, I want to jump on that just real quick. I, I agree totally with Nate. We are, we're kind of, I wouldn't say we're so proactively prepared as reactively prepared, right? It's, it's That's like this, direction. right? Let's, let's, let's peel that out. I yeah. want to understand that. That's a different, different approach. Yeah. So I was, I spent 24 years in the army Nothing ever goes as planned as most military people know. You can plan all you want. It's that's the start. And then everything's going to. Semper Gumby right there. Semper Gumby. There you go. I have one at home too. (laughs) That's funny. I should bring it in. Um, But um, yeah, so it's, it's, if you look at my little signature block too, there's a thing on there called chaos pilot. And it's, it's always being able to, you know, what things are going to go as planned. So you just kind of react to those and we are prepared to react to those things and by kind of absorbing them and going, okay, where are we? What's happening? Let's see if we can't leverage that what's going on now to some thing. Cause it's, it's probably, yeah, it's, it's going to be positive. Probably it may be negative, but it's going to, we're going to get something out of whatever's kind of happening. So to, to continue on just real quick, that, that, that story <laughs> of Camden model should outdoors. never let us talk. <laughs> Where's the mute button? Quick. <laughs> The model outdoor, I'll finish up real quick. <laughs> the model outdoors, we did the interview, right? 
Mm -hmm. I kid you guys not, within 72 hours, I had, between Dennis and I, we had introduced them to uh, military people. So they're in the middle of, of uh, doing slides, slide decks for pitch the military, decks. try to sell pitch decks to mm -hmm. sell to the military. Um, I introduced them to my tech scouting team um, that I am part of around the country uh, for professional tech scouts. That's what my, my day job is. And I introduced them to Rocky Mountain Council of Boy Scouts of America, the BSA. And 24 hours later, the Boy Scouts of America placed their first $2,000 order with them to get their products on their shelf. All wow. of this happened in a one week span. And, and to me, the moral of the story is don't discount something just because you don't think you're prepared. It's mm -hmm. kind of like having children, right? People always say, well, I'm not ready yet. I'm not prepared yet to have children. Well, well, we should stop here now. I'll tell <laughs> I'll tell everybody you're never prepared. You're, prepared. you're never ready. Right. So um, I'm, still, I'm still saying I'm not prepared. Our right. favorite saying now is just run the experiment, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, I love that. You know, there's a couple of things to start out there. One is, you know, a lot of people would say that that kind of interaction, that phone call is lucky. But something that, that you always say is luck is when preparation meets opportunity. So yes. if you're always that, prepared for something, when that opportunity yeah. arises, it seems lucky, but you were just getting ready for it the whole time. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Yeah, I, I say it, but that's a stoic, so I can't take credit for it. Come on. So, <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I, I think you know you think I may be that old sometimes, but uh, <laughs> no, no, what, what I want to, what I'm, what I want to or curious about, if I get my words all tangled up in the excitement that I, that I get to ask a question now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to put myself no, on mute. <laughs> so, so one of the things that that's really, that's really, simple for military guys to do is the plan. But one of the things that we do in military operations that I think gets forgotten about in the business world is the reconnaissance and that preparation, you know, the, the old preparation of the battlefield stuff, whether it's the intelligence, you know, the IPB intelligence preparation of the battlefield or the operational preparation, blah, blah, all those sort of acronyms. I'm curious, have you done that in the business world, that side of preparation? Either one. Go ahead, Nate. You got that. You got that real quizzical look on your face. Uh, no. Well, I'm gonna. I'm gonna have to defer this one to Dennis. I. W I am not ex-military. I've been a oh, DoD okay. contractor for 20 plus years, but I myself am not ex-military. Um, instead of going down the route of uh, the military route, I wanted to give back and and support my my country somehow. So I did it by DoD contracting. So I'll let Dennis take that one. Thanks. Um, it's really funny because my wife wanted to go, wants to go to Lake McConaughey, McConaughey in Kansas. It's about four hours from here. And she's been wanting to go for a long time. And so she said, what are you doing? What are we doing this weekend? I said, I don't know. She goes, well, let's go out there. And I said, well, do you want to go camping? Or Because it's a big, I guess there's real nice beaches and stuff. And anyhow, so she goes, we should go out and do a recon. And uh, just this morning, and she goes, we could be like the Advon and go do a recon. And I'm like, she's, she's ex-military too. <laughs> and I'm like, are you really, you realize the terms you're throwing out here? And she goes, yeah, but that's really what it is, right? We want to go check it out to see if we want to go camping later this summer. I'm like, yes. And so to answer your question, I'm actually a, uh, an army planner. That was my uh, last job is before I retired. Uh, I went to the school of advanced military studies, et cetera. But um, so yes, we, I would say we did. So the reason we started the smalls again was we saw there was a need. Mm -hmm. um, there was a gap in really getting small government contractors together. There are several organizations in town that uh, support the military, whether it's FCA, which is kind of cyber focused, the National um, Defense Industrial Association, NDIA, which is focused on kind of the larger companies, but there wasn't an advocate voice for really the small government contractor. And so we saw that as kind of a, there's a niche, if you will, or an area that we could go into. And so to answer your question, yes, we, we kind of looked at things a little bit, saw that there's some opportunities and just like the larger um, ecosystem, same kind of deal as we're waiting in, we're kind of noticing these areas that we could look at. And so we start looking at who's, who's, who's running those spaces, who's playing in those spaces, who should we be talking to? Um, so there is that aspect to it from the, the prepared kind of side of the houses. We don't necessarily just jump into it. And like he said, the water bottle company, I was like, well, how the heck does that fit into things? Um, so, but he had thought about it already, right? Oh, they want, they're selling to the government. So again, there is some, um, if you will, initial intelligence gathering on kind of what people, what places, what spaces you want to kind of move into. 
Sure. It's kind of like doing the podcast, right? I think when I first brought the the idea to Dennis of maybe doing a podcast, a weekly podcast, well, first of all, I think he's, his response was, well, why? And then two was uh, maybe not weekly, but maybe monthly or whatever. And we settled on a week and then we got down to, well, how long should these podcasts be, right? So that was all very intentional on how we planned all that stuff and we prepared for that. Well, um, we did research too, right? Yeah, exactly. On how so, long are podcasts mm, typically mm, and who's... It, what kind of average, podcasts are out there? And the average podcast throughout the entire world of all five million plus podcasters is forty-three minutes. So uh, you know that's, how, what we, that's what we shot for. How badly skewed is that? Is that by the five-hour Joe Rogans? I gotta wonder. <laughs> <laughs> There's several five, other. Well, we found five, out five-hour interviews a week. It's got to skew the data a little bit. <laughs> and over the last couple months, we've actually done. We've reached out to the community and asked, "Well, mm. are, how how do you like our podcast? Do you want them to be? Are, is the time that are about right, or should it be shorter? Or should it be longer?" And we've had everything on the gambit, right? We've had some people say well, we think podcast should be like 10, 15 minutes. minutes. I'm like, well, you can't get through intros in that amount of time. Um, But then some people are like, man, I didn't want to stop listening. I was so disappointed after it ended after 50 minutes. I wanted to learn more. Mm -hmm. Um, So we're- But but that's the hook. You want that, right? You want that so they come back. Um, Yeah. Exactly. So- That's been interesting. We can use that knowledge now to- to change things and, and maybe bring people back on when people say, man, that, you know, that Cam and Otis guys, we really wanted to hear more from them. Um, now we can say, Hey, we'll bring them back in six months, whatever, and do another show or whatever. Right. So it kind of, it we'll helps us prepare their show. for the future. We'll go on their show. Exactly. And you can listen on their show. So then it's a win-win for you guys and us and the listeners. So win, 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 my favorite. There we go. The triple, the win. triple win. That's right. Oh yeah. Well, one thing that's standing out to me as we're talking about, uh, you know, preparation is I feel like, you know, the proper phrase and as we're really getting down to the nomenclature on these type of things, it's really you're being prepared to adjust is what it comes down to. Because we're we're all talking about recognizing that, un, you know, dad, you talked about last week, the unknown unknowns. We all recognize that there's things that are going to happen that are going to be outside of our control and that are going to change our plans. You know, we say it every episode, everyone's got a plan until they get punched in the face. But I think it's <laughs> what preparation is about is being prepared to adjust to whatever comes your way. Because if you prepare via a plan and that is the only thing you're preparing on, then when something happens and you lose your plan, you're completely lost. But when you're truly prepared, you're able to adjust to whatever is coming your way. Exactly. We're not Inspector Gadget. We cannot have everything to the T prepared out. But what you can prepare for is to be able to adjust to that change. That's how being prepared. As I mentioned before, I run a couple different Cub Scout dens, and and as I talk and teach them kids, being prepared does not mean that you've got a tool for every single situation. Being prepared, number one, means you don't lose your mind if something goes wrong and you don't have that tool, right? So if you get lost up in the mountains, especially in Colorado, right, one of the things I tell them is – one thing that you could do, right, if you're part of a group and, and you've waited around and stayed your space and you, you can't move on, that's fine and, and you're still not found. But in, in a place like Colorado and, and mo- most places that like Colorado, if you find a stream, follow the stream and you'll find humans, mm-hmm. right? So once again, it, that's, it's something you can't really prepare for. Uh, if you have a map, sure, you can you understand the maps and all kinds of stuff. But there's always going to be that one scenario where you're never – truly prepared with a item or mm-hmm. a a backup plan and the backup plan is make sure you have the wits about you kind of mm-hmm. like when you talk with young people about education i used to tell people all the time go get education right if you if a company hires you and they're going to offer you uh schooling for free take advantage of that stuff because that's one thing that nobody can take away from you is your education and your uh that you the knowledge that you've gained over the years I was just, uh, you know, pondering the fact of I'm sitting here watching it snow right now and thinking about, you know, what's in the rucksack and all those sort of things. And, but really what I'm, I'm, I I want to jump into is the unknown unknowns and, and the obvious one. I mean, the big elephant in the room, unknown unknown is, and, and I'm pointing to it like it's in the past, but the Rona, it's still here. But it, this time last year, it was an unknown unknown, right? We were in that how bad is it? It'll only be this long, all these sort of things. So in that sense of being prepared, 
and to include the unknown unknowns, going back to the business side, what did you do in, in your business to shift and manage to keep, you know, keep it in a positive sense, both capital and morale? Um, well, that's a little bit loaded question for us because we, you know, the smalls is our side gig mm -hmm. um, and, and we're relatively small. We've got a, we've got a small board and um, we typically don't meet in person ways mm -hmm. um, because the folks are either here and like Nate down in Pueblo, he lives down in Pueblo. And then the other folks are up in uh, Denver. So we were already kind of doing Zoom board meetings. Uh, we did have to stop having um, in-face meetings, uh, that, which was really our, our bread and butter is the networking events. And so those have been put on hold, um, which actually gave us opportunity to focus on the other aspects of the smalls, which is to develop the podcast more, to mm -hmm. develop out. We revamped the website. We've been looking at the smalls 2.0. What other offerings can we bring? It's kind of given us an opportunity to step back a little bit. Mm -hmm. And what else do we want to do? as an organization and how else can we help the community? Um, what, what's the community looking for? So that in that respect, it's been good. On the corporate side, I will tell you, um, hasn't changed much other than we don't meet face-to-face. -face. Um, I, I have been busier this past year doing business development than I ever have been. Um, there's just been so many opportunities. I was just gonna say that, I, you know, some people, it, we, and we've talked obviously a lot to a lot of people over the past years, um, and it, I, I see one of two, or I see two types of people out there. Those that just, I don't want to say rolled over and just kind of died, but they, they are, they, they just rolled over and it's like, oh, I'm going to take a break for a year here. And Quit. even people that are, are working from home, they're like, man, I've never got so much done around my house. I'm like, what are you talking about? I, we have gotten, I, I would say probably five times busier in this mm -hmm. past year because we saw an opportunity. We're like, Okay, well, if we are going to get a chance to pull back and, and take a, a million mile view look at this, a, a systems engineering view, if you will, um, from top down, let's take a look and, and how can we adjust? That's what, that's what we did with the smalls, literally. Yeah, that's what Dennis said. I mean, we have, we have probably grown the smalls more in the past 12 months than we did the first two years. Mm -hmm. um, and all while uh, this virus thing has been taking place, just because we don't let it affect us, right? Just if you if you if you let it affect you, it will. If you say stop, yep. uh, one word that I don't let my children say at home is the word can't. It is absolutely mm -hmm. not allowed in the house. Um, pretty much any other word would go. Probably not with mom, but um, with dad, the worst word you can tell me is can't. And I, if you ask my kids, they know very emphatically that they will not say that word around me. I'm gonna have to tell your daughter that. So the next time she swears, I'm go up. She's good. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, it's mom that's going to probably pass more than dad. I grew up on a farm uh, working construction projects. So, uh. you know, I think it's uh, very interesting when you look back on, on the last year, because that is something that has been a very clear trend with different businesses, nonprofits, you know, everything as you go through. And even though our networking capacity is greatly limited now, when you talk to different people, I think that those are the two dominant trends that you see in folks is whether they kind of accepted it was like hey you know what man i've been meaning to play a lot of video games i've been meaning to catch up on my soap <laughs> operas whatever it is a lot of people have just said hey i like this i'm happy here i'm happy with where i'm at and then there's the other half of us that looked at it and was like okay there's a lot going on uh, you know the phrase we used a lot dad i might be butchering this is that uh chaos is half crisis half opportunity yep. and I think that you see a lot of people who go into crisis mode and they freeze and they're like, okay, hey, just like we were talking about being in survival situation in the mountains. Hey, wait, someone will come get us. And then there's the other folks who went, okay, there's an opportunity here. There's something to be done to go and help people to solve problems. And, you know, and when you solve problems as a business owner, you can go make money in that situation too. And so I think it's been really interesting to see those two trends shake out. And I think, uh, you know, if we want to get into speculation mode, it'll be interesting to see how, how those people start to adjust back to the world as things go back to uh, normal or whatever the, uh, the newer normal would be. Well, I've already seen it. I'm trying personally right now, we're building a software factory here at, uh, in Quantum, and uh, we're developing the culture from the ground up is really what mm -hmm. we're trying to do. And I've already started seeing it as I'm interviewing some of these people. Um, the first question they ask is, well, can, 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 is this going to be a virtual thing? I'd like to work virtually. And I was like, 
no, it's not because I'm, I literally need people to help me build. Uh, it's paired programming. So I want people to, it's going to be one computer, two people sitting in front of the computer. I need people to start, you know, you know, if you want to come in and wear a mask for sure, I'm not going to stop you. Um, but the point being is it, I think there is going to be a, a huge problem with that um, mm -hmm. because some companies, sure, you can do that. But from what I've seen is we've taken a huge step backwards uh, because the the excitement, the the drive is not there when you're 100 percent virtual. It's just not um, the creativity Dennis had mentioned, The creativity is not there. Dennis, I mean, you can do whiteboarding remote and all this stuff, but it's still the juices don't flow the same. Mm -hmm. And Dennis had said he, you know, he put something new in his uh, signature block. So have I this last year. And the bottom of my signature block on all my emails is uh, Ordo Ab Chow, out of chaos comes order. And that's mm -hmm. really what that I, I've focused this last year on. Everybody's like running and screaming with their hair on fire and uh, thinking that if they get something that they're gonna die, uh, if, if you let it bother you, it will. So I've really tried not to let it bother me. Now that's hard too, because the minute you sneeze, you know, people look at you like, oh my God, he's going to kill all of us. And I'm like, <laughs> well, the survivability rate of 99.9%, .9 we're probably going to be okay. There's still an off a chance. I'm not saying there's not, but and there's still allergies and you still, people still get hit by buses. Right. I mean, it's, oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I think, you know, what, as we're, as we're talking through this, what I've realized is, you know, we said at the beginning that it's an opportunity to step back. And I think when you step back, you wind up going to whether it's philosophy or morality or religion or whatever it is for that individual, you start looking at your life a little bit differently when you step back like that. And for some people, the thing they valued was to go out and be productive. That was an aspect of it. You know, whether they see that as going and making money or helping people or however they view that activity, they wanted to go be productive and proactive out there. And then for other people, it's through, you know, I don't think it's necessarily a negative thing even, if your time with your family is by far your number one important thing and you're like, hey man, you know, I don't need this much money. I don't need to work as much as it is. I think there's other people getting that kind of perspectives. So I, I think to your yeah. point, it'll be interesting to see how that shakes out because the, it's the, the entrepreneur in me and says, you know, if there's an opportunity, a business will fill it whether it's virtual or in person, you know, I think every, I, my thought is at least that things will shake out into those different buckets where people would like to be maybe a little bit better than they were before. But to your point, Nate, I, I you still got to do things in person. There's, there's a uh, secret sauce. I joke about with my company Verbi doing virtual events of like, if you could figure out how to do a virtual networking event that had whatever that secret sauce is of in-person stuff, it would be huge, but I found I found that secret sauce. I'm currently yeah, reading. We're trying to we're figure it out. <laughs> no, I'm currently I'm currently reading a new book. So you guys have heard of Ready Player One. I am a big geek, so oh, I'm yeah. reading Ready Player Two that was just released. And the secret sauce is their uh, adaptive uh, virtual reality system that they're in. So of course okay. that doesn't exist in real life, but uh, you know, it's a good read. Still the same. Coming soon, the Verbi adaptive reality uh, virtual there you go. system. Well, we could get everybody <laughs> headsets and kind of go into the VR and walk around and talk. I don't know. That would be that'd be an interesting experiment to try. And, the experiment, and there's some systems that I've been exposed to that are really close to that, or they're they're virtual tables. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Kind of you like sit on one side or the room, other. Yeah. But, but not control, not centrally controlled, but uh, individually controlled. I hop to this table. Someday we'll get there. I, I think so like this kind of dialogue that we're having here, I think this is good. So I think if you can keep it like to six people or less in a mm -hmm. group, four seems to be optimal to me. Um, once you get like a larger, say 30 people in the space, that's where the networking goes away. Um, oh, and well, that's, that's why Microsoft Teams now has developed their audience uh, yeah, view but mode. It's, so it's still not the same. When you get to a larger group, there's not agreed. a dialogue anymore. It's, oh, no, uh, but what I was saying is I think big tech is realizing that people are, are seeing that and they're, and they're seeing people do this, right? Because they're, they're on their computers looking at email while they're on a video conference and they're not actively engaged anymore because there's mm -hmm. just too many people. So big tech like Microsoft Teams is now putting up you can choose audience mode, which makes it look like a theater on your screen. So you can see every single person all at one time. Mm -hmm. So you can kind of still have that interaction. It's Although everybody does this now. <laughs> yes. As he disappears for those. Just oh, it actually annoys me uh, when I get on a meeting and like nobody has their cameras on. I'm like, why don't we just get on a phone call then? If, if, if mm -hmm. we're going to use the tech, let's use the tech. 
Yeah. yeah. Well, and I want to jump back to something that I, I thought was really interesting and get both of y'all's opinions as we start to walk back towards the barn too. Is, is all this work that goes into preparation builds up a confidence to be able to handle whatever happens, whether it's a known unknown or the unknown unknown, right? And I'm just curious, you know, as you go into things, whether it's Nate working with your, your Cub Scout troops or, or Dennis in the business world, or, or, or Nate, you can talk business too, it's okay. Uh, but in, in that sort of sense of how that, how you handle that, you know, what, what does that, what does that appeal to? Because because really what, what everybody wants to know is, well, how much time do I spend preparing, right? And, and I think that's the, that's, the, that's the nugget that everybody wants that, you know, you're successful. Okay, so how much time do you spend preparing so that you are confident when you go in and you find out it ain't working or it does work? So I'll toss that, I'll toss that to you, Dennis, first. My first thought while you're asking, when you asked the question was everything I do prepares me for tomorrow. Yes, sir. Um, you know, it's, it's this morning I went and, you know, it's funny, Nate said, well, we're never shy away from a conversation. My buddy called me yesterday and said, Hey, you want to grab breakfast? And I was like, sure, let's go grab breakfast. So that's what I did this morning. Um, and, you know, I got a lot of things out of it. We, we had actually started talking about forming a company years ago. Uh, to do suborbital space transportation and support that effort with the Colorado spaceport, et cetera, got kind of put on hold because of COVID this last year, but um, he want, he would like to start doing some things again. Um, but again, you know, it's, it's just having discussions with people. It's thinking about things. I'm a super avid reader. I'm always reading articles like Nate just mentioned, you know, books, articles on how to, how businesses thrive, what they do better. Um, I subscribe to a billion different blogs and, stuff. I don't listen to a lot of podcasts, but I do listen to some. Um, you know, I, I find on the business side of podcasting, that's been really interesting. You kind of have your facts sort of business podcast. They talk about the stock market and this and that. And then you have the five hour, Tim Ferriss isn't that long, but you have these long ones. My attention span isn't that long. Um, mm -hmm. So I can't do those too often um, unless I'm stuck someplace. But um, the shorter ones I, I can deal with a little more. And, um, you know, I find the little smaller content, give, give me the bullet that I need to know. I like that a little better, but, mm -hmm. but again, every day for me is kind of preparing for the next day. I learn something every day. I meet new people every day. Um, I think about things every day, different things. You've had me today already thinking about a couple of things that I haven't thought about. Um, so that's kind of where I'm at. Nate. Um, I would Nate. say to add to that, I would say, the being prepared thing to be able to just hop into any meeting. Um, it's somewhat of a personality trait as well, because you're going to see extroverts, obviously Dennis and I are extremely extroverted. Um, but then you're going to get an introvert, which my, my wife, for example, and I'm a she closet would not introvert. And she, I actually, I, mean, am, I actually am an introvert. I don't really <laughs> like, I don't, I don't, I don't, I got pushed to do this kind of stuff when I worked at the U S embassy in Europe I won't tell you where uh, my boss made me go into a room with all these other attaches and said, Hey, I want you to introduce yourself to every one of these guys. And then uh, tomorrow, give me a back brief on who you talk to, what they do, blah, 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 blah. I was scared to death. And so I went in there and, but, but I can walk up to anybody today and just start a conversation. But in reality, I don't like doing that. I'd rather go sit up in the mountains in my little hooch and mm -hmm. just hang out and watch the birds. Right. Um, but I, I still think it has somewhat to do with the personality trait, right? Yes. Because you, you, you learn that personality trait. I was somewhat born with that personality trait. My wife, she just, every, every time we go out together, she actually hates going out just because she's like, you're always leaving me. You're, you, you're over there talking with other people. And I'm just like, well, come and talk to me. I don't like to talk to people. You know that I'm like, well, you just want me to sit there and not talk to anybody either. I mean, that's, that's not me. My personality trait is, is I'm going to, I'm going to try to find that next business deal. I'm going to try to find that next, the next friend. Um, is, is that's, you know, it's, it's, it's just that personality trait. So I, what I would say is if you're an entrepreneur and you are that introvert, either force yourself to try to become that person or bring somebody else on your team, right? Dennis and I happen across each other because like I said, we met over coffee, I think one day um, we end up, we were working in the same building. We didn't know that at the time. Directly um, we, below me. 
yeah. And we started the relationship of, of doing lots and lots of different things together, business ventures, whatever. But the, I think the point is, is that is we, we're trying to hit home is we're the type that's always going to have that conversation. Literally, if, if we meet, if we're standing in line for a cup of Starbucks and, and we see somebody standing there and, <laughs> and they're talking with somebody else, I have no problem going up to them and saying, hey, I didn't mean to interrupt you or don't mean to interrupt you, but I just overheard you say that you're developing this new cool new tech. I'm a tech scout. You want to chat? Here's my card, right? I'm, I'm just laughing because I, I remember yesterday we stopped to get breakfast and I was in the place for like a half hour and he's like what are you sitting down there getting breakfast or something and i was actually talking to this guy who was standing there doing some construction and we i was actually helping him because he's i don't understand what that's up there for i said oh there was a tv monitor to see the cable and all that he's like oh and anyways we got to yapping and nate's like hey man i'm out in the car waiting for you what are you doing you sitting down having a breakfast (laughs) you know Uh, the the thing that uh, stands out to me uh, talking about preparation with y'all is that there's different types of preparation. You know, we had talked about this a little bit last week, dad, I used my test taking example of school that I would know a lot of people who had spent the last 15 minutes before tests, cramming down all their notes and going through everything. And I always, always just sit there and relax because to me, I felt like I either had a knowledge or I didn't. And what mattered was my mindset at that point, that if I came in stressed from working, then I was going to have a bad time on the test. But if I came in relaxed and confident, not complacent, but confident, then I would go and do well on that. And I think that's the same type of thing that you, that y'all are talking about there, that there's different types of ways to prepare. And I think what that really comes down to is, you know, your, your routine and your habits, right? It's ways that you're able to prime yourself either from just a personality trait that doesn't take too much priming or by actively doing it to yourself of, you know, making yourself make a phone call every morning. So you have to talk to somebody. So you get a little bit more extroverted every day or whatever it is doing things to prime yourself in order to be prepared for the rest of the day, even though you may not know what's exactly coming. We, we made my kids, um, call and make their own doctor's appointments, which was hilarious. Cause they're like, can't, can't we text them? I'm like, no, you have to call them. We'll have to talk to them. Yes, you'll have to talk to them. And that was really hard. They were like, mm-hmm. Can, can't you do it for me? I'm like, no, you have to learn to talk to people. And I bet you if we ask them, we should, we should do a call in and call my son, John. Anyways, um, you know, I bet you he would say, I hated that, but it was good for me because mm-hmm. it actually, like you said, it kind of prepared them for real life where you got to call people and talk to them. <laughs> Uh, you know, you can text your friends and all that. I used to tell them, why don't you just call them and talk to them? Oh, dad, you know, we text. Um, so there's some of that, um, you know, as you're talking for prepare, I keep on having this mental thought of, and I just wrote it down here is adapt and overcome, right. used to be kind of a Mm -hmm. motto a long time ago, but really the preparation is, is the, as as you've said several times, I guess we're kind of going to the, what did I learn today is the mental preparation. You know what? I, uh, I was <laughs> <laughs> it's it's the mental preparation like you said <laughs> uh, it's the mental preparation to adapt to situations mm. uh the unknown unknowns because you're not going to know but it's the mental preparation of being kind of semper gumby pliable that you can say okay i'm not ready for this but let's look at it and then figure out a way ahead Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that is, as you mentioned, that is, to me, that's the key. And that's the thing I, I did learn in the Army. That's the thing that, you know, as I read books and, you know, I'm a big fan of Gary V. Um, if you're not a fan of his. Um, but, you know, that, that's what he talks about, is, as Nate said, just go at it. Don't stop. Don't, don't listen to other people. If this is your passion, move out on it. And you're constantly mm-hmm. going to hit those barriers or something that you didn't think about that's going to throw you off. But it's, it's the ability to kind of look, step back and go, huh, like you just said, well, I may not know 100% of everything, but dang it, I'm here and I'm going to go, th- I'm moving forward. Mm-hmm. And that, my, that to me is the thing. My favorite saying of all times um, and has always been the person with the biggest dreams is more powerful and successful than the person with all the facts. Mm-hmm. And to me, that speaks exactly to being prepared. You cannot be prepared for everything. You're never going to be prepared to have your children. You're going to have something that happens, right? You're going to have whatever. Life throws curveballs at us. That's part of why we're here. That's part of the journey is not knowing everything. So being having that ability, as Dennis eloquently put earlier, that everything we do today is preparing us for tomorrow. And that's the way you have to look at life. You, if you look at it any differently, 
you're just going to be stuck and you're going to be stuck in this circle just nonstop of, of never wanting to move forward, uh, scared to make that next big jump. You know, if, if, if you have listeners out there that are looking for their next job, I, I tell I tell people, have the conversation. I used to have 120 direct reports in my, in my previous job. Um, whenever they would tell me, oh man, or I'd get, I'd hear from other people saying, Hey, did you know that John over here is looking for a new job? I'd be like, sweet. And I'd literally go talk to John and say, Hey John, what's going on? And he's like, Oh, I don't want to tell you. And I'm like, why not? I said, if, if any, any employer worth their weight in gold should never try to keep you from, from meeting your, your dreams, right? If you have a dream to go someplace else, you have an offer, an option, have that conversation. I always have your, your resume prepared and I always be prepared to have that next conversation because you don't know where that next conversation is going to take you. That, that's great. Now, now I, I'm going to reverse it and say, what did you learn, Nate? Uh, today, honestly, guys, I learned, you know, to, to really think of it as, and really as, as being prepared, um, it is more about it's it's multifaceted. It's not just thinking of making a list and that's now I'm prepared because I have my list. Um, I, you know, my wife will tell you guys that on the weekends she gets frustrated with me because I am that guy on the weekend a lot of times, right? I have a tough time if I have a, a, a task list to do on the weekend. I'm like, I got to get this done. I don't care if it's blizzarding out. I got to mow the lawn, right? It's going to happen. Mm-hmm. It's just kind of my my personality trait. Um, but at the same time, I, you know, I, being prepared can mean multiple things to different people. Um, mm-hmm. The focus end of your guys' thing, um, that's a whole nother question uh, because me focusing is I'm always the squirrel type guy uh, because I do, make, I do make time to have that next conversation, mm-hmm. right? It's um, if, I'm, if I'm focusing on having this conversation and somebody says, now let's go talk to a model manufacturer or a bottle manufacturer, why not? We might be focused over here, but maybe I need to change my focus. We don't know until we get have that conversation. Uh, that's, that's great. That's great. Well, for for me, it was uh, – now, where's my notes? There it is. Every experience I have happens for a reason. And if you think about that and, and use that in the proper sense of, of what happened to me and, and how do I adjust and adapt and overcome that, because if it's bad, it is still happened for a reason. What can I, I always tell people, what can you learn from it? What can you gain from it? You know, you get in a car accident, maybe that person that you hit your, you know, ran your truck into might be a really nice person, might be your next client, might be a business partner. You mm-hmm. never know. So when you look at things that way and have that sort of attitude going forward in life, I think that that just opens up so many more opportunities, you know, to yeah. have that that way over here. Why in the world would I talk to that guy? Well, let's find out. You know, I so. actually have a friend who married uh, the guy that she ran into. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> See, <she> exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that. Camden, what'd you learn? Uh, so I was just going to reiterate to never turn down a conversation. I loved that. That was a really uh, great way of thinking about things. But then the other one, and uh, for uh, don't work in uh, government contract and field or anything, I had no idea that Colorado had the second highest concentration of, uh, how did you put it? Government business, government contractors? Go- uh, government agencies. Government, government agencies. agencies. Yeah. yeah. I had Part- no idea. And I spent most of my life in Colorado. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> most people got to reiterate that. Yeah. Yeah. So guys, tell us, tell us how, uh, you know, the small businesses uh, and, and, you know, kind of the parameters for being part of the smalls and how people can support y'all. Uh, so listen to the podcast, uh, go to our website. It's www.thesmalls.org. There's a, uh, place to, um, you know, add your email to our distro list. Uh, we put out a weekly calendar of events of interest for government contractors, uh, on the website, it's also the calendar, so check it out. Uh, there's a lot of information on the website. Um, if you're wanted to start a government contracting firm, or you are already part of a government contracting firm, that site is for you. Um, we will help you find the resources, the people, the organizations to help you succeed um, and grow. That that's our overall intent. Um, so that that's it. That's that's the easiest one. Nate, I. No, I support us just like they support your your folks as well. Um, like like I said, take a listen to our podcast. Um, 
Uh, the smalls.org is the biggest website. We, as well as you guys, are distributed everywhere. Every single major podcasting uh, software that you use, app, whatever, we're on We're on them all. Google, Apple, Spotify. I, I've got us on Amazon now. I've got us on po- uh, Pandora. Um, every single one you can think of, we're on out there. So, uh, yeah, we, we enjoyed the conversation today, guys, immensely. Um, just like any other nonprofit, if, if you guys are a big, if there's a big company listening out there, we're always looking for sponsors on our podcast as well or, our, or for the nonprofit, um, trying to get us to that next level to help as many people as we possibly can. So, I, I got to ask one clarifying question, though. Is, is it limited to the front range, the Colorado front range, or are you open to businesses no. from all over? Any, anywhere. Okay. I mean, the focus is the Rocky Mountain region, if you will. However, we mm-hmm. do have uh, partnerships with uh, companies like uh, GovMates, who helps link companies to um, government uh, organizations. Uh, they're based out of D.C. So, no, there's not a geographical space anymore. It's open to whomever. Great. I thought you were going to say none of those West Western Slope weirdos out in Grand Junction. <laughs> <laughs> no, and actually we're tied in with uh, the Pacific Northwest uh, Defense Contractors. I think that's how what they are um, out, out in the Washington, Oregon. That's also a similar organization, and PACA, the the uh, Professional Aerospace Contractor Association down in New Mexico, has bat in um, Huntsville, Alabama, and the IRA, not the Republican uh, Irish Republican Army, but the uh, Industrial Representatives Association in Maryland. So if you're if you're traveling and you're gonna, you know, you have some time, if you want to attend any of their meetings, we can put you in touch with those guys too. So um, kind of yeah. like organizations. Yeah, and to to tag back up with what Otis's question there was. Um, anybody can become a member there is no limitation if you're a business of one or a business of a million come join us yeah and if you got water bottles and you want to sell them to the army you're in <laughs> that's awesome hey guys really appreciate y'all's time uh and and sharing with us and educating us a bit more about uh about the smalls about your business about how to be prepared Camden, run us out Thank you all again for listening to today's show. Special thanks to our guests, Nate Moser and Dennis Cater. Uh, and thank you to our sponsors, Verbi Virtual Events and Tribe and Purpose. Find your purpose, build your tribe. You can check out recent episodes of the Cam and Otis Show on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever you get your podcasts. And check out a full archive at thecaminotashow.buzzsprout.com. The Cam and Otis Show is on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Thanks again, and we'll see you all next week.